Street Fighter VI is a 2D fighter that has two main control schemes, classic controls and modern controls. Both control methods allow you to move your character by pressing forward and back, perform a crouch with any down direction, and jumping forward, back, or in a neutral position by tapping up forward, up back, and up respectively. You can quickly approach or retreat from your opponent by double tapping towards or away respectively. With classic controls, Street Fighter VI is a six button fighter having three punches and three kicks, with light, medium, and heavy versions. There are different attacks for each button in the standing position, the crouching position, and the jumping position. Characters may have unique attacks that require you to hold a direction input and press a certain button. You may find them in the command list under the unique attacks category. With the classic control scheme, you'll be required to perform motion inputs for special attacks, such as the infamous Hadouken, which requires a quarter circle forward motion combined with a punch button. You are able to vary the strength and properties of the special move depending on whether you press a light, medium or heavy version of the button giving you a special attack different properties. With the Hadouken, one of the main properties that changes depending on the button pressed is the speed at which the fireball travels. You are able to perform overdrive versions commonly referred to as EX attacks by pressing two of the required buttons in combination with the motion input. This will make your character flash yellow when successfully performed and give you a powerful attack. With the Hadouken, this allows it to hit multiple times, travel very fast, and knock the opponent down on a successful hit. Overdrive attacks have a downside of requiring two bars of the drive gauge to be utilized. We'll speak on the drive gauge later in this video. There are a few different motion inputs in Street Fighter VI, such as the quarter circle input, half circle input, 360 input, and Z motion input. It's okay if you can't perform them straight away or are slower than you'd like to be. With practice, I can assure you they'll become second nature and a great indicator of personal progress when you are confidently able to utilize them in a real battle. Alongside motion inputs, there are double down direction inputs and charge inputs. Charge inputs require you to hold that direction input for just under a second in duration, then tap the alternative direction plus your attack input to successfully perform. This is how you perform the infamous sonic boom and flash kick attacks on Guile. A good tip to be aware of is that you can charge back inputs with either back, up back or down back. And you can charge down inputs with down, down forward or down back. This lets you charge either direction at a single time with down back and allows you to stay in one spot while charging your special attack. It's important to note that you can charge your special attack at any time, such as blocking, attacking, being hit, or even taunting. Modern controls are much more streamlined than classic controls, with only a light, medium, and heavy button for attacks, no separate punches and kick buttons, along with a dedicated special attack button. This means you will be restricted with the number of attacks that your character can perform, but the special attacks available to your character with this control scheme are easier to perform, as they just require a direction input combined with your special attack button. Modern controls give you an assist button, which when held and combined with button presses of light, medium or heavy attack buttons, will automatically perform one of three basic combos. You can perform your overdrive attacks by holding the assist button or performing your special attacks. There is no right or wrong way to play, I recommend you give both a try and if you're willing to explore the deeper aspects of your character and the gameplay, play around with classic controls. Both control schemes allow you to unleash powerful attacks in the form of super arts. Super arts require either one, two or three stocks of your super arts gauge depending on the attack. Classic controls require you to perform two motion inputs in sequence in combination with the attack input, whilst the modern controls simply demand you hold down the assist button and press a direction plus heavy attack. The super art gauge feels when you damage your opponent as well as when you receive damage. 
It does also increase a small amount when either of you blocks an attack. You are able to perform a generic throw attack on an opponent by pressing both a light punch and light kick together using classic controls, or light and medium attack at the same time for modern controls. You may combine this with an away direction input to throw your opponent behind you, swapping places with your opponent. Some characters can perform a throw attack in the air. You may defend or tech a general throw attack by pressing the throw attack input at the same time as your opponent. You cannot tech throws performed in the air or special attacks that have the throw property, such as Zangief's screw pile driver. Throw attacks are a great way to break your opponent's guard, as the throw attack will override your opponent's guard. Speaking of guarding. You can perform a standing guard by holding away from your opponent, and you can perform a crouching guard by holding down and away from your opponent. In Street Fighter VI, attacks are categorized as high, middle, low, and overhead attacks. Most attacks are either middle or low attacks. Middle attacks can be blocked with either a standing guard or a crouching guard. Low attacks must be defended against with a crouching guard. All jumping attacks and some unique attacks are classified as overhead attacks, which must be guarded against with a standing guard. Lastly, some attacks are technically categorized as high in which a crouching opponent will slip underneath. A fundamental Street Fighter mechanic you should be aware of when blocking an attack are cross-up attacks. Because you perform the guarding action by holding away from your opponent, if the opponent were to get on the other side of you to attack, you would not be guarding anymore, but instead moving towards your opponent. Some jumping actions, if used on the other side of your guard, will instead need to be blocked the other direction. Be on the lookout for characters such as JP, who may be setting up some abilities behind you that need to be defended against in the opposite direction. When in doubt, prioritize crouching guard if you're unfamiliar with an opponent's attack, and use a standing guard when your opponent attacks from the air. One small thing to note is that when you get knocked down, you can impact how you rise, or commonly referred to as wake up. If you do nothing, you will stand back up in place. If you press two buttons on landing, you will roll backwards and quickly regain your footing. Unfortunately, some attacks knock you down so bad that it's technically a hard knockdown, and you cannot influence how you wake up. Overall, your guarding abilities are impacted by the state of your drive gauge, which we'll discuss now. Your drive gauge is segmented into six smaller blocks or bars which may be spent to perform overdrive actions. You gain drive gauge by attacking your opponent or letting time pass by, where it refills faster when moving towards your opponent, promoting an offensive playstyle. Your drive gauge will deplete when blocking and taking damage, scaling with the power of the attack, as well as depleting when you spend drive gauge to perform overdrive actions. We already discussed overdrive arts previously, in which you may spend two bars to perform enhanced special attacks. A great way to use the drive gauge is by performing a drive parry. You can perform a drive parry by holding down medium punch and kick with classic controls, or the drive parry button if using modern controls. The drive parry is a powerful defensive tool allowing you to defend against all attacks, so long as they're not classified as a throw attack. The drive parry will slowly deplete your drive gauge if you are not parrying attacks, but it will quickly refill if you are successful in parrying your opponent's attack. If you activate your drive parry just as you were to be attacked, you will instead perform a perfect parry, allowing you to match the strength of your opponent's attack for a powerful counter-attack. If you are blocking or parrying attacks, you may spend two bars to perform a drive reversal, pushing your opponent off you. Drive reversals are performed by pressing the direction input towards your opponent and the heavy punch and kick buttons when using classic controls, or pressing forwards and the drive impact button when using modern controls. 
Remember, to perform a drive reversal, you must be blocking an attack by either guarding or via a drive parry, meaning you must be quick with your inputs to successfully perform it. Another use of the drive gauge is the ability to perform drive rushes. Drive rush may seem a little advanced, but it's a very powerful and versatile mechanic. The drive rush can allow you to augment your normal attacks, punish certain attacks, and extend your combos. Drive rush may be performed from the drive parry state by double tapping forward when parrying. Activating it this way will only cost one drive bar. You may perform a drive rush after a specific attack. Using it this way will cost three drive bars. After a drive rush, your attack has enhanced properties, allowing you to link a wider range of attacks after it to perform extended combos, as well as allowing you to perform safer attacks without fear of retaliation. See which moves you can perform a drive rush out of and experiment with the options you have available to you. You may spend one bar of your drive gauge to perform the drive impact attack. To perform a drive impact attack, you must press your heavy punch and kick together if using classic controls, or simply press the drive impact button if using modern controls. This powerful attack will absorb two of your opponent's blows and still strike your opponent. If it is successful in striking your opponent, it will crush them, allowing you to follow up with an attack. Normally, if your opponent were to guard against a drive impact attack, they would be relatively safe. But if you use a drive impact attack on the opponent in the corner, even if they were to guard against it, they would still be crushed. There are limited cases where if you were to force your opponent to block the drive impact attack, they would not be crushed, but that is out of the scope of this beginner's tutorial. A strong counter to the drive impact is to either drive parry the attack, or if you are fast enough, use your own drive impact on reaction, absorbing their blow and crushing your opponent. Lastly, in regard to the drive gauge, if you have fully depleted your drive bar, you will enter the burnt out state. When you are burnt out, you cannot perform any overdrive actions and your guarding abilities will be much worse. You will suffer chip damage from special attacks meaning that you can suffer defeat from an attack that you successfully blocked. This also means that you will fail to guard against drive impact attacks in the corner where they'll leave you stunned and open to a big attack. Furthermore, you will become worse at retaliating against your opponent's attacks as you will stay stuck in your block for longer when guarding against your opponent. Sometimes your attack leaves your opponent reeling so badly that you can link another attack after the first before they can even get their guard up. This is called a combo. You'll know when a combo was performed when the number pops up on the side of the screen telling you how many hits you've performed. Every character has moves that may combo into different moves. It simply requires you to experiment with the tools available to your character. You may more easily test your combo abilities in the training mode under simple training settings and selecting combo practice. This will make your opponent guard every attack after the first to show if you're performing true combos. Depending on the move you perform, you may be able to link a special attack before or after the attack. This is called cancelling. There are many types of attack cancels in Street Fighter 6, with some moves allowing you to cancel into special attacks, drive impact attacks, drive rushes, or even super art attacks. Your combo pathways may be expanded depending on how you landed your strikes. When you interrupt your opponent's attack, you have now performed a counter hit. This will cause your attack to deal more damage and leave your opponent staggered for longer, allowing you to combo into attacks that normally would have been guarded against. Sometimes, if your opponent missed a big attack, you may be able to strike them when they're recovering from their move, leading you to cause a punished counterattack. Your opponent will now be heavily staggered, allowing the largest pool of options for your combo pathways. See if you can space your character from button mashing opponents and punish their whiffed attacks for big damage. If you want to explore how much your attack may stagger the opponent, 
or how effective blocking an attack may be, you can always check these details using the in-game frame meter. The frame meter looks like a complex bar of colors, but it's a simple and powerful tool. You can see when you use an attack, the window of time that you may be interrupted with a counter-attack, shown by this colored segment here. You can see the time that the attack is actually able to hurt people with this colored segment here. And lastly, you can see when you may be punished in retaliation with this colored segment here. Every notch in this bar represents a frame, and there are 60 of these frames a second. It is simply a way to represent time in the game, as we may say that an attack has 5 frames of startup animation, rather than saying an attack has 0.0833 recurring seconds of startup animation. This allows you to figure out if you could actually retaliate against an opponent if you blocked an attack. When Jamie uses his heavy sweeping attack, if you block it, it will leave him stuck in his recovering animation for 10 frames. This is referred to as Jamie being negative 10 frames. This means that you are plus 10 frames and have 10 frames to do with however you please. And a great way to spend those 10 frames is by using a move that has less than 10 frames of startup so that you may strike him back without him recovering. This is why you need to be careful carelessly throwing out big moves with long recovery times, because your opponent has more time to punish you for it. We also need to remember that if you are in a burnt out state after depleting all of your drive gauge, your blocking ability will be much worse, allowing your opponent to bombard you with more attacks that you would normally be able to interrupt. Sometimes your opponent just keeps jumping around and kicking you in the head and you really want them to knock it off. Well one way to do so is to perform an anti-air attack. Sometimes an attack is an anti-air attack because it kind of hits upwards and that's good enough, whilst other times the attack is fully invincible against air attacks. The most common anti-air attack that's invincible against aerial attacks is the Shoryuken. It doesn't just stop with air invincibility attacks, but some are invincible to strikes, others are invincible to projectiles, and some are just completely invincible. You can check the properties of your move using the in-game frame meter. Sometimes your attack isn't completely invincible, but can absorb an attack or two. This is called an armored attack. This is just like the drive impact, which is an armored move which may absorb two strikes. You can break through your opponent's armor using multi-hit moves, with a throwing attack, or with a powerful armor break attack, such as your super art attack. This is when you delve into the unique properties of each character and see what they bring to a fight. Remember when I mentioned about charging your special attacks while blocking well, you can buffer many different moves during times in which you can't really do much. A classic technique which I don't always recommend is the Wake Up EX Soryuken, in which you can buffer the motion input whilst waking up from being knocked down and press the button just before you have control of your character, allowing you to do your attack the first frame that you have control of your character. It's important to remember that just because you can't move, doesn't mean you can't be preparing for your next attack. Lastly, when it comes to throwing attacks, some characters have unique throws that, as we know, cannot be teched against. You can evade these throws and regular throws as well by either dashing backwards or performing a jump. Keep this in mind when you're stuck in the corner against Zangief. There are many different ways to play the game, and each character offers a unique experience to fulfill the way that you want to play. Whether that be an offensive powerhouse, a long range specialist, a grappling tank, experiment and see what suits your playstyle. Thanks for watching, all of my subscribers and any new subscribers will have a double knowledge buff for an entire month, so that they may learn Street Fighter 6 just that little bit faster. Bye!